live. Here goes the recording. Here goes that recording. And here goes your intro. Oh, I forgot to turn the volume back up. Doop, doop. Hey everybody, this is Ted DiBiase, the million dollar man. And if you want to get your money's worth, stay right here because you're listening to knockouts and three counts. And remember, everybody's got a price. The million dollar man. This is Don West here, and I'm telling you, knock out to three counts. It's the podcast, baby. Make sure that's the one you check out because, buddy, like me, they're the real deal, baby. is Jake the State Roberts. Just letting you know, you need to listen to the knockouts and three counts or you see that damn snake again. This is the Ring of Honor World Television Champion, a.k.a. Shane T, boy, the baddest champion you've ever seen, boy. And you're listening to knockouts and three counts. What up, do everybody? This is Kyle, and you are listening to or watching Knockouts and Three Counts. And as we tried to let you guys know, I mean, we've got a hell of a show in store for you guys. Um, I'm going to be riding solo again this week, but I've got a very special guest. So before I get to our special guest, like you already should know, you can follow me at Detroit Knockout on Twitter and Instagram. Follow the show at KO3C Pod on Twitter and Instagram, and Knockouts and Three Counts on YouTube so you don't miss any of the great interviews with the likes of DDP, MJF, Dean Malenko, and more, make sure you're checking that out. Without any further ado, we've got Jackson, the Shogun Stone. How you doing, brother man? Well, well, well. First off, we got to make a correction. It is the suplex. Suplex Shogun. Excuse me. I will give you one more chance to give that correct. Go ahead. Hey, I'm not trying to get dumped on my neck. Throw out your social media and let them know where they can find you at. What's up, everybody? It's the Suplex Shogun, Jack Stone. You can find me on Facebook. Just type in Jack Stone, my athlete page will pop up. You can find me on YouTube, all fun clips of me, Suplex, your favorite wrestler on there. You can also find me on Instagram at Jackson underscore Stone 313 and Twitter, Jackson underscore Stone 31. What's up, everybody? Hey, man. It's, uh, First of all, thanks for coming on. We're happy to have you. Um, happy to be here. You know, how? first of all, how you been holding up with all this madness, man? I mean, I'm pretty sure this ain't how you expected things to go after you got your big win on Gut Check. Well, the suplex Shogun Jack Stone likes to take things in stride. He rides that river of life. And, you know, whatever, whatever type of uh, energy that he's getting, he just rides with it. So, yeah, a little disappointment. However, there's always opportunity wherever there's disappointment because for me i just took this as a time to just get myself sharp that's all so let's talk about that how are you keeping up with working out right now what's that looking like since you're obviously the gyms are all closed right now oh man we come prepared all the time we grab kettlebells we sling them around and we can't get kettlebells we find somebody real quick wash our hands and throw them around a few times So are you more like traditional bodybuilding type stuff? Do you like CrossFit? Like what's uh like what's your workout of choice? Shogun's very much a blend. I enjoy a blend of working out. I I I can my workout somewhat to I would say uh Bruce Lee, uh also mixed with the you know, you have the t shirts of Arnold Schwarzenegger, you have also Dorian Yates, you have uh Tom Plash, you also have all the new gen crossfitters right now with all their movements. For me, my thing is I want to stay strong in every type of position I'm in. So it doesn't matter if I'm throwing somebody up right now in vertical suplex or if somebody's trying to pin me right now, I just sit up and then I suplex them again. Shogun wants to stay strong in every single situation. So for me, kettlebells, high intensity reps, riding that bike sprints, that's my thing. That's what keeps me going. Okay, so you've got the name Suplex Shogun. First of all, before I get to my question, I was going to ask, tell me how that came about. Like, was wrestling always what the Shogun wanted to do? Was there anything else, you know, maybe in his mind? Or, like, what was it that sparked you and got you into wrestling? Hmm. Well, Suplex Shogun Jackson has always been a physical uh, individual. Always. From the moment I, I stepped out the womb, to be honest with you, I started doing judoka at the age of four. My father, Ooh. 
sensei. I like it. He was my sensei all throughout my adolescence to the times I was in junior high to high school to even some of my collegiate bouts when I was in wrestling. He was there supporting me. And I was fortunate to have a lot of mentors that taught me the ways of grappling and taught me the ways of like just physicality. I mean, I played rugby when I was in high school, also in college, and of course, football as well. So for me, I've always been uh, just one that wants to have collisions. So that brings up a great question. So I don't know if you caught the vibe uh, from the stuff we were posting for promo and all those things, but our show also covers MMA as well. We've mm-hmm. had the likes of Sam Alvey from the UFC on there, Miles mm-hmm. Fury from Bellator, people from Bare Knuckle FC, and all that mm-hmm. kind of stuff as well. So you said that you got into judo. You ever messed with jujitsu at all? And what are your what are your thoughts on MMA? Is it something you rock with or? Shogun has definitely yes for that. I love jujitsu. Jujitsu to me is like the three D version of what judo is. Not to say not to take anything from the uh, judoka pra- uh, practitioners, but. Jiu-Jitsu is very practical in nature for me, especially what I do. And for me, I've uh, I've kind of, I've just had one competition, and I played second in that competition. It was at the uh, it was about two years ago in uh, Toledo, and I can't wait to get back because honestly, uh, due to wrestling and all the shows picking up, and you know now what the situation we're in, I haven't had an opportunity to really uh, harness or sharpen my skills. But I can't wait to throw that gi back on and just start learning different ways. So was the tournament you competed in the Toledo Open? You know what? I believe it was. Well, what do you know? I fought in that tournament too. Hey, hey. (laughs) So full disclosure here. So the reason why our show covers MMA as well, Devin, who is one of our main hosts on here, he's been to a ton of the UFCs, but I started boxing at the age of 13. I had my first fight at 14. Uh, more for me, it was uh, because I grew up with cerebral palsy and Crohn's disease. So mm. I got bullied a lot. Mom got tired of it, put me in a gym in Detroit. You know the rest. Anyway, that turned into fighting, and then I got a purple belt in jiu-jitsu myself. So, hey, yeah. there we go. Shout That's out to Mark Denage, by the way. Lots of people should know. Lots of people in the jiu-jitsu world, they probably know that name, probably don't. Mike Denage, just saying, shouts out to him, good friend of mine. Hey, man, I, I'm with it. So my way. So you've been making your, you've been making your name around the Detroit scene for a while. I've seen you around at places like XICW. I've seen you backstage at BCWA when we've been there. Hang on. uh Oh, I can't forget. I can't forget, man. You tell us about the strap real quick. I don't want to disrespect the gold. Oh, you know what? I mean, you want that one or do you want this? one? Hell bring it all in there. Which one do you want Shogun to talk about for you? <laughs> Tell us about all of them. And now that one, actually, um, the one on your right shoulder, that's from over there in Canada, isn't it? Correct. Correct. Right, right. Because I uh, I think one of their uh, promoters was talking about uh, talking about having you over there um, when we were promoting the show. So tell us about the, tell us about the goal, man. Shouts out to everybody, all the fans of XICW, all the fans of Cross Body Pro Wrestling up in uh, Kitchener, Ontario, we are we are here right now, and uh, right now I have the XICW Proof Ground Championship and the Crossbody Tag Team Championship. This one I have of uh, the XICW Proof Ground Championship. I've had for about oh, man, it's going on almost three years actually. Jesus, uh, yeah, almost almost three years. We're in two and a half for sure, but we're almost reaching that three year mark, and uh, I've won it from uh, jamie cox and jamie cox is a great 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 mind great mind know wrestling. jamie cox real well <laughs> yeah yeah hard-hitting man very very uh very very good mentor also and uh, but i was fortunate to uh to be the better man that night and to uh, capture this title and i've had it for about been defending it I, I have the most title defenses of course with my suplex shogun challenge you know getting five suplexes and then you win I was pretty much, uh, I pretty much just made this title as important as I can in Michigan, not just in Michigan, but in the Midwest, not just in the Midwest, but in the country. So that brings me right to my point. You know, I mean, you've really been making your name in the Detroit area for, uh, you know, quite a long time now. Um, 
you know, as many people know, if you looked at the promo uh, leading up to this show, you know, I mentioned how you just won the Impact Wrestling Gut Check. Mm -hmm. Um, Tell me about that. So obviously you were doing your thing on the indies, you know, what's that going to look like now that you're over there doing your thing in Impact? I'm going to get to that real quick, but I'm going to give a quick shout out to Crossbody and also tag team partner Blake. Blake Past guest of the show, Blake. Blake 182 is a past guest of our show. Yes, yes. And we will be back soon defending these. Hopefully we had a great match planned, great match, just just ready to go against the uh, the dirty old vets. But unfortunately, we weren't able to do that. But I know we will get back to it because of the so. coronavirus. Corona. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, but, hey man, it's, I, I, ain't got, I got none but love for Blake. Like I said, he's a past guest of the show. He's uh, hopped on and rapped with us with uh DBA's yeah. son Malcolm Monroe as well. Another good one. Yeah. And you know, to go on to what you mentioned about uh impact wrestling, I'm very fortunate. I'm very fortunate. I'm thankful for everybody that came out and supported Shogun throughout that journey. And uh for me, I mean the the moment, like hold on, just the lead up, you know, the lead up of being back there, seeing everybody doing what you want to 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 be doing, you know, at that level with all these cameras, all these lights all around, you know, you just want to be in that environment all the time. And for you to really just to get there, man, I felt, I felt so, I felt so thrilled, but of course with the circumstances of just, as soon as I got back home, it was, Hey, you got to stay home. However, again, I've been staying sharp. I've been staying ready. So whenever, whenever the opportunity calls, Shogun will be ready. So will we still be seeing Shogun all around the Detroit area, even though you're with Impact now? You will be seeing Shogun around Michigan. Nice. Nice. Because I checked out a couple of them over at... uh, You never know. (laughs) Hey, let us know and we'll definitely have it everywhere you want to see it at ko3cpod.com. Um, dude, like I said, I mean, we've, uh, we've been to a few of the border city shows that they've ran over there at, uh, at, um, damn, we can't spit it out the shit. Can't spit it out. The bar over there. Can't spit it out right now. Um, diamondback. That's it. Diamondback. Um, we went there when we interviewed, uh, past guests of the show, Congo Kong, along with Jimmy Jacobs, uh, when we were there for that. So yeah, man, you're, you're definitely in good company over there. Um, what are your thoughts on the overall landscape right now? I mean, obviously we're in an unprecedented time. I mean, nobody's really ever went through anything like this. Obviously, you know, you guys were fortunate enough to have, you know, some TV in the can to where you guys were the only ones for a little while that had, you know, TV that was coming out with fans in the crowd. Um, How do you think things are going to shake out when we make it out of this whole thing? Oh, people are going to be so ready for wrestling. Like that's the thing right now. Like I'm, I, I have no worries about the wrestling industry uh, because I know once we get back to it, once people are able to be able to sit down and enjoy a show, I'm sure I'm positive that wrestling is going to come back full force 10 times. It's almost going to be somewhat of how 2012, 2013 felt where it was just a jolt of life into wrestling. And I honestly feel that people are just ready to see action. They're ready to see stories. They're ready to, to see, you know, to see victories and losses they're ready so we're here to deliver so i'm slacking just a little bit here because i had uh i had something that i needed to show the showgun since the promo pictures that you were kind enough to send us i (laughs) meant to go grab some lemonade so tell me why lemonade happens to be your favorite drink man i mean hot damn (laughs) his (laughs) the most most righteous of juices. I love it. It's a it's my suplexing fuel. It's the one thing that definitely keeps me pumping, keeps me going. If I'm in any point of the match where I'm just dehydrated, eliminated is the one thing for sure that's gonna bring me back so I can get, just just start suplexing again. Think Bobby Boucher, but with suplexes. Okay, so is it pink lemonade or do you just like straight up regular lemonade? And is it a specific brand? Straight lemonade for me, but pink lemonade when I want to party sometimes. You know what I mean? <laughs> Pink lemonade when I'm feeling frisky. Jesus Every Christ. Night. <laughs> so, kinds of lemonade, blueberry lemonade, raspberry lemonade. You can like a little grape lemonade, but for me, honestly, I like straight. Hey, man, I'm a fan of the strawberry lemonade myself, but strawberry lemonade. <laughs> hey, sure. strawberry lemonade's the hit, especially when you put real strawberries in there, boy. Oh man, <laughs> I'd be, I'll be smashing it. 
Hook Shogun up with some straight lemonade. We'll be good friends. <laughs> hey, bro. Like I said, next time I see you backstage, I'll have some lemonade for the Shogun. Thank you. Thank you. Thank <laughs> so we talked a little bit about, you know, you doing your thing with Impact and getting to do the gut check. Can you tell me a little bit about how all that came about? Like how you were able to get involved into the tournament and like what was what was the experience like for you? Like, were there any like real big nerves for you going into it? Like, just give me a little bit of a background on like how that, how you got there. Well, I mean, honestly, the whole process was just nerve wracking. The entire process is, uh, it was, it was long. It was, uh, you know, it was very, it's very thorough as well, but at the same time, uh, I was thorough, I'm sorry, but at the same time for me, uh, it was something that just, I never felt so in tune at the same time. You know, it was one of those moments where you train so hard to get to something. And when, and when I finally got there, I'm like, all right, this is the opportunity. Every single, honestly, every single moment was like, all right, this is the opportunity. This is the opportunity. This is the opportunity. Because it led to another chapter. And for me, it started uh, with me getting the call saying, hey, you got the okay to, to try out to get onto the show. And during that time, man, it was... The competition, I mean, the competition was like, was crazy the entire time, but walking in, there was 20 plus competitors and everybody brought their A game, everybody. So, you know, it wasn't no lack. It wasn't any lack of talent, athleticism, anything, character, nothing. And but I was fortunate to be one of the few that got picked, that got selected. And during that entire time, man, it was just training constantly, grinding constantly, hitting the ropes constantly, proving yourself constantly. It was nonstop, to be honest with you. Even when the cameras were off, it was still a test, not just physically, but mentally as well. And that's the whole thing. I feel like out of this entire situation, I came out mentally stronger. I came out mentally sharper. And shouts out to all the competition, especially Tyler Turbin, my, the, the one of the finalists in the competition as well. Great, great, great wrestler. And that's somebody you won't see last of for sure. But him, Clayton Gaines, Tony Gunn, all those guys, great competitors as well, and everybody beforehand. But uh, for me, I'm fortunate to step on this platform now and make use of it, you know, and be able to make use of it. So, again, thank you to everybody, everybody that just showed love during that entire time because it was, it, was, it was some tough days, but we made it. Whole new crop. I mean, it's a whole crew, new crop of uh, competition for you and the company like Impact where – I really feel like they're trying to, you know, you hear a lot now, especially with companies like AEW and stuff where you hear like things like they want to be an alternative. They want to be, you know, you want to, I feel like impact is really different from all the other counterparts. I feel like they're starting to bring in a good blend of both new guys and experienced guys. And then guys like yourself who have been grinding for a while, you know, bringing you in, you know, and then you've got, you know, like you just had that big mass release with WWE and we've already seen um, Deanna Perrazzo go over there. And those are only the ones that we've seen. Uh, are there any matches in Impact that stick out to you uh, in particular? And what are your thoughts on the brand as a whole? Well, honestly, it's a, it's a brand that's on its, that's that's definitely showcasing top tier talent. Everybody brings every single show. Everybody brings their their game. I love that, and that's one of the reasons why I want to be there for sure, and why others, everybody, want to be there. Honestly, for me, it's match wise. I mean, going through this, the 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 faces I'm seeing right now, everybody, man, you have so many different people, so many different great competitors, strong competitors, and I've ran into you know a few already. And honestly, it's just everybody. Shogun just wants to face everybody. You know, you have you have every single person there that just brings something special. Some bring something heavy to the ring, and Shogun wants all that. Hey man, Shogun wants all the smoke. I ain't got no pro. I ain't got no problem with that. All of it, man. So, but I know it's up. It's gonna be an uphill battle, but I'm willing to suplex while I'm going up there. And honestly, it's a consistent battle. It's just about being consistent. That's all. Hey man, I like it. So my next question for you is, you know, you mentioned, we talked a little bit about, you know, your judo background and that you're a fan of MMA. Right. What's your thoughts on everything that we've been seeing now, now that you're getting a lot more frequent fights? Did you watch uh, UFC 250 last weekend? Hell yeah. Well, who, what was your favorite fight? Favorite fight? Uh, 
I, for me, it was my favorite fight. I didn't really have a favorite one. I guess I would say Garbrandt, uh, a Sun Sao, although I have to say, I really kind of thought no disrespect to Garbrandt, but I really, really thought he was going down again. Uh, I, did I, I did really, too. I mean, I bet money on, on a Sun, a Sun Sao say that five times real fast I got, got, got. <laughs> but uh yeah man like i had money on him just because cody had been on a skid but damn talk about haymakers bro good lord oh one plant just once he planted bam oh my goodness this beautiful follow through too that Dude, was he damn near killed the man but beautiful. i mean i feel like for semantics alone because it happened at the end of the round that wins knockout of the night but oh my god Sugar Sean O'Malley mm. slept this dude. Man, slept this guy with like the, with the most beautiful hair ever, <laughs> dude. Like, I mean, I don't know if back in six nine right now might be a good idea, but I mean, hey, <laughs> I was about to say like, I don't know if he's trying to back six nine or if he's just trying to make his own fashion statement. <laughs> hey, man, all I know is that dude came in, knocked the shit out of old boy. And you know what's funny? I watched his review after the fight, and they were talking about it. He said uh, that he wanted – he was one of the guys who said that he wanted to be paid fairly well. He goes, yeah, I'm here an extra day uh, after the fight because UFC hit me up, said uh, they wanted to uh, they wanted to talk, talk uh, business. So, I mean, clearly it worked. Clearly. Clearly. <laughs> So I don't know, man. I'm interested to see where we go from here, though, because, I mean, with Nunez, who the fuck is left for her to fight? Oh, she's dominating everybody. But for right now, I was about to say, like, my favorite fight for sure so far has been Francis. I just love Like, that's been my favorite my favorite knockout uh, like, during this entire situation uh, is Francis and Nog. If we're talking and favorite fights that have happened during the whole thing, I'd say uh, – when uh, the Chinese girl, uh, Zhang Li, when she won the belt uh, from Joanna, oh, yeah. they they beat the dog shit out of each other, bro. Mm -hmm. But, yes. uh, I mean, all in all, man, it's been good fights. Uh, it's interesting to see where everything's going to lay out. Um, Sean O'Malley, I think, is going to be the future, uh, one of the future guys for the UFC. I don't see any stock in Connor retiring. I think that that's just a ploy to get some more money. Mm -hmm. But... We'll that, see. I mean, that's a that's round two, right? Then he already uh, did he he's already retired up. three times in the last four years. Repeat. There you go. I mean, hey, I mean, this guy for somebody who says he wants nothing to do with wrestling, he's got the wrestling retirement down to a T. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so the other question I have for you is: so we've got this segment on the show, mm -hmm. and we call it locker room etiquette. We've had everything from Josh Briggs from Evolve telling everybody to bring their own water bottle, bring their own wrist tape, Congo Kong telling you to wash your balls and keep your girlfriend out the locker room, uh, <laughs> keep your baby mama out the locker room, uh, all kinds of shit. Don't have shitty gear. And then all the ones everybody's heard. So if you have one pet peeve, one thing that's either advice for a young guy or something that pisses you off or just something that's funny. Mm. What would it be? You know what? Oh, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go for a three peat on this one. It's gonna be one of each. Uh, etiquette wise, I I'm I very much am a uh, I I adore the old school ways of the locker room. Um, like there's that clip of Andre. I don't know if you saw that documentary of of Andre. Yes, camera went into the background. He got so pissed. He was like, "Hey, what are you doing?" That is essentially. And I know there are some there's some exceptions to to the rule, but uh, that's exactly how, how I can how I feel like Andre had it right. Like yeah, it's a very sacred area. It's a very particular area. You don't see people walking back into the the Pistons or Lions locker room, you know, just saying what's up. So it's just one of those things. I just I, I agree. Now in terms of um, etiquette, like or etiquette advice to new guys. Oh man, just talk to everybody just just talk to every single person you possibly can and, and be respectful with it you know a lot of people will try to uh and there's been issues of me having to tell uh, particular individuals this of them wanting to tell others about themselves so much that they they come off arrogant they come off um self-centered you know it's good to get to know the other person you know you'll show yourself off soon you know they'll ask but it's good just to get get those those you know little trinkets of lessons from those vets ask them you know to watch a match 
ask them if you can't hey watch this real uh this this little spot i had what do you think how do you think i should do it how you think i should go about it um that's that's the type of thing for me communicate communication because a, a quiet locker room is a very tense locker room and to me i feel like it's great to interact with your with with, with the other individual hey, man, and i i like that <laughs> yeah and then uh, and then for the last, because it's, it's always about synergy for Shogun. Shogun's always about synergy. Why would I, as a person who's up and coming or going in my nature, why would I try to stomp somebody else down? No, we want to talk. We want to try to engage. We want to try to make everything the best we possibly can. So to the young guys, please just keep, and to the older guys, please keep communicating with each other. Just keep talking with each other. It's great. It's, it's you, great conversations, honestly. Um, but what was the last one? Like, what was like the last list of that? It was etiquette, advice, funny stories. I mean, honestly, man, anything with anytime you have that one individual, it's always that one individual that just likes to walk around balls free, lemons free. Just <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 and it's no problem because again, it's sacred area, it's our area. But it's, it's the manner of going about it. Look, man, you don't need to be doing frog splashes. <laughs> you don't need to be doing like, like the <laughs> dog. That's another thing at the MMA gym or jujitsu gym, dude. Like, I mean, it's one thing to like, you know, walk to the shower, do your thing, whatever, bro. But there ain't no neat reason to be like literally rocking out with your balls out like that, bro. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. It's, I mean, it's reminds me of the old guys in the gym, the meme of that. <laughs> so, I mean, hey, man, it's. But again, it's just kind of, the, I guess, the charm of the locker room. And, uh, you, you know, I don't know if the women have to deal with it in, there, in, in that world as well. But, yeah, I mean, there's always that one person <laughs> in that in that locker room. But, yeah, it's, uh, either way, man, um, yeah. <laughs> I, I just, my, like, my biggest thing is just that second part is just advice to the rookies. Okay, so the last question I got, because we're at, we're at uh, time, and I know the Shogun's got places to be and plots to scheme. So... Mm-hmm. If you could pick any one person, don't matter who it is, mm-hmm. and he could any time period, any era, or here, I'll throw in since you're an MMA fan, even fighters, you could have a match with anybody you want, any time period, and any kind of match, anywhere you want. Who would it be and why? All right, I'm going to give you two fighters. I'm going to give you okay. two people. Uh, well, one fighter, one wrestler. Fighter, uh, for sure, uh, man, it's... Okay, actually, I was about to say for sure, but damn, it's tough. Because it's between Crow Crop and Mike Tyson. <laughs> it's between Uh-oh. and Mike Tyson. <laughs> like, because, like, that's just, that, that's got to be crazy, man, just to be in the ring with them. Uh, that's got to be, oh, my God. But um, I will also say, I will say wrestler. Uh, I'm going to give you two of those, two. Great Muda, the great Muda, Ooh. most definitely. Most definitely, man. And good choice. Uh, One of Tony's favorites. <laughs> hey, and uh Kenta Kobashi. Look Orange, at you, man. Orange Pulling Crow. them all the way out. <laughs> oh, you are, man, you are, you know. I would have caught I would have put Masao in there, but I mean, hey, hey, you know, we we're going with two on this one. But yeah, those two uh pivotal wise, they're pivotal in building Shogun. Taz is as well, uh Kurt Angle is as well, but uh in terms of just the makeup of Shogun. It was a match between Kenta Kobashi and Samoa Joe in Ring of Honor that really inspired nice. me to uh to go forth full force with what I do now. And well, then great move it's, to do it. it sucks that I had to find this all out at the end because I've got a whole list of stuff that I can go off with that. But hey, that's gonna bring us plenty of content for the next time. So I want to be respectful of your time, man. Throw your social media out, let everybody know where they can find you and Hey, we're definitely going to have to bring you back soon. And hopefully next time things will calm down. So I'll have everybody else in here with us as well. Most, most definitely. Uh, hey, real quick again, ladies and gentlemen, just suplex Shogun shouts out. You can find me on Facebook, type in Jack Stone, find me on YouTube. Look at some of uh, great clips of me suplexing all those great wrestlers. And also you can find me on Instagram at Jackson underscore stone 313 and Jackson underscore stone 31 for my Twitter. Hey, man, like I said, we appreciate the Shogun's time. We appreciate you being on the show with us, man. And, hey, we'll definitely have to bring you back. Hell, maybe when we get uh, back at this, maybe we'll get one of these done in person. Man, we'll get it popping, most definitely. I got I got some lemonade and a mask for you, buddy. <laughs> hey, hey, I'm with it, bro. I'm always down for some lemonade, especially with how hot it's getting shit. <laughs> man, hey, just make sure you give me some strawberry lemonade. Then. How about that? We'll hey, bet. Some-
Bet. Uh, you got it. it. Hey, appreciate you as well, brother, man. All right, now. Yes, sir. The Suplex Shogun, everyone. Um, make sure you're checking him out. Like I said, he just threw out all the social medias. They'll all be in the links to the comments if you're watching this on YouTube. Um, like I said, man, great interview. Um, thank you for your time. Uh, I'm really excited to see what he does in Impact. Um, this guy has definitely been making a name for himself here in the Detroit area. Um, and I'm really excited to see what he's going to do now with this newfound opportunity uh, with you know, I'm really excited to see this newfound opportunity that he has an impact and what he does with it. Um, happy birthday, Richard Skith. Uh, I don't know if I said that wrong, but happy birthday. We appreciate it. Um, and sorry you're spending your birthday alone, brother man, but we appreciate that you're spending it with us. Um, we talked a little bit about UFC with the Shogun. Um, we had UFC 250 this past weekend. Um, you had a very dominant performance by, uh, obviously, I feel like it's undeniable at this point, but the greatest women's of all time fighter, Amanda Nunez, she had a dominant performance over Felicia Spencer, really just put the work to her um, and really, you know, just further cemented why she is the you know, greatest of all time. You had a nasty knockout by Cody Garbrandt. Um, we'll see if he can come back from it. Sugar Sean O'Malley, man, great performance for him as well. Um, Justin Maine, we see you in here as well, brother man. Um, Shogun just got out of here. Another past guest of the show who we're really looking forward to seeing once we can get back to the normalness of everything. So UFC 250, it was a great card. Um, I'm loving seeing these fights. I'm really interested to see how the um, fight Island thing is going to play out. Um, I believe we've got a fight night coming this week. And then you had NXT uh, takeover in your house. Uh, all in all, I thought that was a great show, but it had its clunks. Like the, I liked the dynamic between the matches with uh, Keith Lee and Mia Yim uh, verse and uh, versus Johnny Gargano and Candice LeRae. Uh, in that match, though, I hated the plexiglass. Like, if they're all standing all together like that, why do you need the plexiglass? Because when he did the do, went to do the pounce on him, it was, uh, yeah, it was interesting. Um, but the women's match, the main event, the triple threat between Charlotte, uh, Charlotte Flair, Rhea Ripley, um, and Io Shirai was a good match. I'm surprised that Io got the win there. Um, all in all, great matches. Another sleeper for me would have been Finn Balor versus uh, um, Damian Priest. I thought that was a good match. I love to see Finn kind of back strong again, you know, because he had his woes when he got to the main roster. All in all, man, there's a lot of stuff going on here. You'll have to make sure you're checking us out. Make sure you're subscribed on YouTube. We're going to have our prediction videos for the UFC shows coming up. You've got Backlash coming this Sunday. We'll have something with that as well. Um, I just want to say thank you to everybody that was uh, checking us out this week. Shout out to our sponsor, Stransky & Company Realty. If you're in the market for a house, make sure you check them out. All the links to their website are at our website, ko3cpod.com. Um, you can find them at admin at stranskyandcompany.com. Make sure you send them an email. They're the, the easy button for um, real estate here, guys. I mean, and everything just got opened back up. You can go check out these open houses. Many of them have been shared off of our um, page. So make sure you're checking that out. And, um, you know, before we get out of here, I just want to say thank you guys for checking us out while we've all been in this quarantine. Uh, we've had our interviews with guys like Zicky Dice, Chris Van Bleet, and more and you guys have all showed up and continued to watch us so i want to say thank you uh from all the guys uh for checking us out make sure you continue to check us out and i just want to say stay safe everybody and realize man that if we you know if we can't come together as a people man there's not really going to be a change you know right is right and wrong is wrong and uh make sure you're looking out for everybody stay safe with all this corona stuff and uh, until next time, make sure you're checking us out on all of our social medias. You can find me at Detroit Knockout, Detroit N O K O U T, K O 3 C Pod, Twitter and Instagram, K O 3 C Pod.com. And until next time, peace. <laughs>